All right, so uh, this chapter is on articulations, which are joints. This is going to be a very brief chapter. I'm going to divide it into two sections. Um, so in this first video, we are going to go over some terminology and kind of how joints are classified. And then we'll talk about synovial joints. And then in the second video, we'll talk about um, different movements that specific joints allow and we'll look at um, some special joints like the knee and the shoulder. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so we can classify joints in two different ways. All right, so we can classify them um, functionally, so that's just based on the amount of movement that they allow, and we can classify them structurally based on what type of tissue is connecting the two bones, all right? So articulations, again, are joints, all right? So this is where two bones are joined together, okay? So let's talk about our functional classifications first. So first we have a uh, synarthrosis. So this is an articulation that allows no movement, all right? So syn means without. All right, so this would allow no movement without any movement. And so some examples of this, uh, and you should be familiar with a few examples, all right, are gonna be uh, the sutures of the skull. Okay, so those are the joint, joints between the different skull bones. Those, once they're fully formed, um, don't move, all right? So sutures in the skull are not gonna move. Uh, gomphosis is one you've probably not heard of. So this is the joint between a tooth and a socket, all right? So this is a tooth in its socket. And so that should not have any movement, all right? If it does, I mean, aside from primary teeth when they're falling out, right? But adult uh, permanent tooth in its socket should have no movement at all, right? So that should be a synarthrosis. Okay, and then one other example is called a synchondrosis, all right? And so uh, this, so chondro, right, when you see that word, you should be thinking it involves cartilage. And so this is a joint between two bones that is formed with cartilage. And an example of that would be uh, between the vertebrae, all right? So those intervertebral discs are cartilage. All right, and so that uh, joint is a synchondrosis and it actually doesn't really allow um, movement, okay. All right, so then our next category is an amphiarthrosis. And so an amphiarthrosis allows a very slight little bit of movement, okay, so slight movement. And so let's talk about some examples of that um, and so there's two main examples you should know. So an amphiarthrosis, one is the pubic symphysis. All right, so the pubic symphysis, remember that's the connection between uh, the pelvic bones anteriorly, all right? You have a little bit of fibrocartilage connecting them, all right? And that allows a little bit of movement, that pubic symphysis, but not much, okay? So that's one, and then the second one you should know is called a syndesmosis. All right, and so an example of a syndesmosis, so this is a joint formed by uh, fibrous connective tissue. And so an example of this would be the distal end where the tibia and fibula meet. Okay, so the distal tibia and fibula. They're held to each other by fibrous connective tissue, uh, and it does not allow much movement. All right, so fibula. Okay. All right, and then our last category is diarthrosis. So this is gonna be all freely moving joints. So these are typically, you know, the joints you normally would think of, right? So your elbow, your shoulder, wrist, fingers, all that stuff, you know, your knees, your hips. Um, anything that can move with uh, a relative degree of freedom, uh, freedom is going to be a diarthrosis. Okay, so most joints. So you can fill that in with pretty much anyone you can think of. Okay.
I'm sure you have lots of examples of diarthrosis, diarthroses. All right, so now let's talk about structural classification. And so we mentioned a few of these when we were talking about our functional. Um, you can have fibrous connective tissue connecting bones. You can have cartilage connecting bones. Uh, so let's talk about that. Okay, so our first type of structural classification is going to be a fibrous one. And so this involves um, obviously two bones being connected by fibrous connective tissue. All right. Uh, and so we talked about um, the syndesmosis. All right. That syndesmosis is also an example of um, a fibrous joint because those bones are held together by fibrous connective tissue. Uh, the gomphosis that we also mentioned, gomphosis, all right, so that tooth in its socket, that is formed by fibrous connective tissue. So there's ligaments that hold that tooth in the socket. Uh, and then another example would be the sutures. All right, so sutures in the skull are actually formed by um, very small amounts of like a very thin layer of fibrous connective tissue. So sutures would be uh, an example of a fibrous joint too. Okay, and so then we have joints that are formed between two bones by cartilage, all right? And so one we mentioned before was that pubic symphysis, all right? So the symphysis, Remember that was fibrocartilage, all right? And um, one that might not be that obvious is actually, because you don't think about it being separate bones, but technically in, uh, in you know, children, the epiphyseal plate, all right? is uh, a cartilaginous um, articulation, right? So you're connecting two pieces of bone by cartilage, all right? That's hyaline cartilage. Uh, it does eventually ossify, um, so it wouldn't, it's not always gonna be uh, a cartilaginous joint, um, but it is for a certain period of time, okay? All right, so then that's hyaline cartilage. All right, and then our last structural classification for joints is the synovial joints. All right, and so these synovial joints are gonna have synovial membranes between them, all right? Synovial membrane. And so we're gonna talk about these in just a second, okay? And so again, uh, essentially, um, Diarthrotic joints, right? Our whole category of diarthroses are gonna be synovial joints, all right? So this would be all of the diarthrotic joints, all diarthrosis, all right? So all diarthroses are gonna be synovial joints. So all freely moving joints are gonna have synovial membranes between them. Okay, all right, so now let's talk about synovial joints, all right, and we can kind of label this synovial joint and look at the different parts of it. Um, so with synovial joints, uh, obviously they're going to contain the synovial membranes, uh, and then they also, outside of that, have a fibrous capsule. Okay, so let's start kind of from the outside and we'll work our way in. So on the outside we have this, it's this white part here, all right, that's the fibrous capsule. It's made of uh, dense connective tissue. All right, so a lot of collagen fiber is very strong, kind of protects that um, joint area with all those membranes. All right, so that's going to be around the entire outside. So we're looking at uh, just a cross section right through the bone. So this would actually encircle right this entire joint. All right, okay, so it have a fibrous capsule all the way around it, and it would have these membranes as well all the way around it. 
All right. And so um, next we would have our actual synovial membrane. All right. So that's going to be just inside of that fibrous capsule. So this green membrane here is our synovial membrane. And if you remember when we talked about membranes, what a synovial membrane is made of, it is scattered cells, right? It doesn't have a true epithelial layer, right? So it's scattered cells uh, and areolar connective tissue. All right, so an areolar connective tissue is making up that synovial membrane. That synovial membrane is going to secrete synovial fluid, all right? That's its function, is to make synovial fluid. Okay, and so then also inside of this joint kind of cavity, we have this blue tissue here. Actually, whoops, let me point to it up here so we don't cross lines in a minute. All right, so that is our articular cartilage. Remember the ends of all of the long bones, and so these are gonna be bones that form synovial joints. All right, are covered in that articular cartilage, and that is hyaline cartilage. All right, and that helps to cushion, and if these two bones come into contact with each other, right, during movement, um, that articular cartilage protects the ends of the bones and kind of uh, lubricates it so they're not scraping against each other. Okay, so that's hyaline cartilage. All right. Okay, and so then let's talk about the synovial fluid. So the uh, synovial membrane here is going to make synovial fluid, and it's going to secrete it into this cavity of that synovial joint. All right, so all inside of here would be synovial fluid. Okay, and so uh, that synovial fluid, what it's made up of, primarily is hyaluronic acid. All right, hyaluronic acid, which we learned about in our tissue chapters, has kind of like an egg white consistency. All right, so it's not a watery fluid, right? It's a little more viscous than that, uh, and it helps to cushion that joint. So it's hyaluronic acid, and it's gonna contain some uh, nutrients. All right, because remember, cartilage, all right, this articular cartilage is avascular, okay? So it doesn't have blood vessels. So it needs to get nutrients from somewhere. And so this articular cartilage is gonna get its nutrients from that synovial fluid. So it kind of has two major functions in that it cushions the joint surfaces, right? So that synovial joint, and it helps to nourish that articular cartilage. Okay, so those are our membranes and our structures within that synovial joint. All right, but you can also find synovial membranes elsewhere doing other functions. So if we look at this, this would be the shoulder joint, all right? And so this is um, the glenoid fossa of the scapula, and then you have the acromion of the scapula up here, and so then this would be the head of the humerus that we're looking at. All right, and so then we have our synovial membrane here of the actual synovial joint cavity, all right, and you can see our articular cartilage on the bone here. And then you can see these additional kind of areas here and here, all right, of synovial membrane that are not actually point, part of that joint cavity. Okay, so you have your synovial joint, which is here, all right. There's no real easy way to point to that, so I'll just point it out like this. All right, so that's our synovial joint. <laughs> Okay, and within that synovial joint, you have, or sorry, around that synovial joint, you typically would have bursa. Okay, so this would be an example of a bursa. So bursa is basically just a pouch of synovial membrane that is full of synovial fluid. All right, so it's gonna be a pouch or a packet, all right? Think of it almost like, I kind of just imagine like a Ziploc bag, all right, that's made of synovial membrane, that's full of synovial fluid. That's kind of what it's like, all right? So packet of membrane, synovial membrane, 
that's full of synovial fluid. All right. And so normally these are going to be located between different kind of tendons and ligaments and that sort of thing. Okay. And so they help to reduce friction um, and provide padding between tendons and ligaments. Okay. So padding between tendons and ligaments. All right, and I'm sure you've heard of bursitis, okay? And so that's when a um, bursa becomes inflamed. And so a lot of times uh, people that work kind of on their knees, they should wear knee pads, right? Maybe somebody who lays tiles for a living or a carpet or something like that or flooring, um, usually they'll have like knee pads to help protect their knees from bursitis because you have quite a few bursa in your knee and when you keep squishing on them, all right, and pressing on them, you kind of force out a lot of that fluid and they can become very inflamed, okay? And that's bursitis, all right? So those are our bursa and so they sit kind of just these little pockets of synovial membrane. They sit between, so we would have a ligament here and here, all right? And so they sit between them. Actually, this would be a ligament. This would be a tendon uh, going to a muscle. All right. And so when that muscle contracts and you get movement and this joint is moving, all right, that helps to prevent friction from these two rubbing against each other. So that's what the bursa is going to do. Okay. And then the other type of synovial membrane that we have, our third example of synovial membrane is a tendon sheath. All right. And so that's what we have here okay wrapped around this tendon so this is going to be a tendon okay so remember connecting muscle to bone all right and so a tendon sheath um, its job is to just reduce friction on just that tendon itself okay so it wraps around a tendon all right so it's like another if you took again like that ziploc bag made of synovial fluid or made of synovial membrane, full of synovial fluid, and you kind of just wrap it around a tendon, that's what this would be, right? So it's wrapped around a tendon. All right, and so it's there to reduce friction because those tendons are connected to muscles, and when the muscles contract, you get a lot of movement, and so you don't want that movement to cause any kind of friction that could damage that tendon. All right, so imagine if this muscle were contracting, this tendon would be rubbing against the bone here, right? There would be other tendons next to it as well. Uh, and so you don't want all that rubbing together, all right, and creating friction. So that's the job of the, the tendon sheath, okay? All right, so that's it for this video. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about the types of synovial joints and what kind of movements we can have in those. And then we'll look at some specific examples of synovial joints.